the work of one of the most widely distributed artists you've never heard of is probably gracing your bedside table or coffee table right now. It's definitely in your doctor's or dentist's office. Who are we talking about? His name is Tim O'Brien, and he's an illustrator of magazine covers. Dozens of magazines, including Time, The Smithsonian, GQ, Rolling Stone, Newsweek, TV Guide, The Atlantic Monthly, Business Week. The list goes on and on. I have a special spot on my heart for all the Time covers I've done over the years. I don't quite know how many, but I did my first one in 1989, and I did them through the Clinton administration and the Bush administration, Obama administration. I've done a painting of... Bin Laden when he was captured and killed, and that was a big cover. Illustration is a time-honored art form that predates not only photography, but even the printing press. It was a major form of communication prior to printing, and if we want to go way back to uh, religious iconography as a way of educating people who couldn't read. In the printed world, before photography, it was the only way to show how things looked. One of the most famous illustrators of all time was Norman Rockwell. He depicted with great realism particular moments not caught with a camera. And that's something illustration can do, depict a feeling or convey a message or idea when a photo just can't do the job. O'Brien remembers a cover he did for the Smithsonian Magazine. O'Brien says illustration can also make a point without being accused of false news. Time Magazine takes a real photograph of Trump or somebody like that, and then does some digital manipulation to the photograph to convey a point. It's altering reality in a way that blurs the lines of, uh, this is my opinion, by the way, this is not Time's opinion. But if an artist does a painting of it, it has a certain latitude that allows you to get away with things. Unlike fine art, where an artist works alone for inspiration, an illustrator works alongside an artistic director. An art director calls, asks me if I could do something, I say yes, and then I immediately start getting to it. It's a collaboration. It's the unknown of what any given week will bring. And a fine artist generally doesn't operate with prompts from anyone else. They wake up and they decide what they want to do that day. When former Attorney General William Barr exonerated former President Donald Trump of any collusion with the Russians, Time magazine wanted a cover to mark this moment and, at the same time, make a statement. D.W. Pine, who's the creative director at Time, we've worked together for years, and we have an understanding about what works and what doesn't. So he emailed me early on a Monday morning and said we have potential cover, and he just says, Trump and an umbrella. And I know the situation that he, the bar sort of cleared him, so then it's about doing a little pencil sketch for myself and then getting all the necessary part a buying reference for the body and then assembling things and then sending all that to time and different versions of that. And then they approve one. And I do this all within like two or three hours. That's extraordinarily quick. But O'Brien honed his ability to work fast early in his career. I knew a long time ago, about 20 years ago, that if I was going to be an editorial illustrator, I was going to have to be faster. And I was going to have to prove that, too. The art director would never think to, if they had a short deadline, let's just hire an oil painter. That was was the last thing you would want to do. You'd want to find a digital artist who can theoretically work quicker. And because of the fast-paced news cycle, O'Brien says a good illustrator also must be up to the minute with current events. If you want to do editorial, you should know a little bit about the world. And I do spend a lot of my day listening to news and reading the newspaper. From the time O'Brien gets the initial request email to making sketches, to getting approval, and then painting the final illustration, the entire process takes roughly three days. That's literally not enough time for the paint to dry. These days, I have a high-end camera, and I have a dedicated area of my studio where I take the painting and bring it over to the photography stand and photograph it, and send the client the image. O'Brien has worked as an illustrator through four presidencies— He says each president was different and required varied artistic skill sets. During the whole Obama administration, he was quite photogenic and scandal-free. And I didn't do a lot, apart from when he was elected, I did a lot of portraits of him. But after he was president, I didn't do a lot of portraits. And there weren't a lot of 
Shakespearean covers of magazines of the foibles of Obama. It just didn't happen. But fortunately, there's plenty of other work for illustrators other than magazine covers. They do illustrations about science or relationships or economics or race and gender. And they do science fiction book covers and all kinds of different images, as well as like surface design, like uh, patterns on clothing. Even postage stamps, which O'Brien says are the exact opposite of magazine covers in terms of pace. I've done several U.S. postage stamps. Most of them have been like Legends of Hollywood stamps. And it's a long process. They tell you that they want you to do a stamp, and then you do your sketches, and then you have to wait for a committee to look at them, and that can take months. And then if there's changes, you do those changes, and then you wait for the next time that committee meets. So they can go on for a long, long time. And in case you're wondering, the original painting from which the stamp is made must be under 10 inches in height. You don't want to do it too large because you can't see that it's a painting if it reduces so much. So you want to do the painting small so that some of the brushwork is still evident. O'Brien has also illustrated several well-known book covers. However, he wishes he could have done one series in particular. The Harry Potter series would have been a nice thing to get. But, you know, I'm not greedy. I'm happy with the Hunger Games. I did the whole series. As president of the Society of Illustrators in New York City, O'Brien loves to promote the work of illustrators and publicize their important role in documenting history, present and future. He also oversees the Society's three galleries of exhibits that change every couple months. We have had exhibitions in every genre from science fiction art to comic and cartoon art. We had the Art of Spider-Man, which was a big exhibition. Illustrations are everywhere, yet we rarely stop and think about the creative person behind that piece of art. You can learn more about editorial illustration and our guest, Tim O'Brien, by heading to viewpointsradio.org. This segment originally aired in January 2022 and was written by Polly Hansen. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. Our studio manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Coming up next week. One of the things that is so important about science fiction is this confrontation with the present. We cover an author who's paved the way for greater diversity in science fiction. Then. They're a perfect democratic society. They take everybody's input and then they make a group decision and they thrive by each doing a little tiny bit of contribution and work. We dive into the fascinating inner workings of bees. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows and find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints.